In this quick connect, we'll spend a few minutes talking about I.O. isolation, what it is, and how SIBO ensures it. So what is I.O. isolation? In its simplest form, I.O. isolation simply means maintaining physically separate networks. You wouldn't want to have their network that's connected out to the internet connected directly to your network that's going to your SAM. That would open up a lot of opportunities for uh, you know, data theft, data corruption, um, general bad behavior. So we keep these things separate to make sure that everything is controlled in terms of access. Now the traditional data center was used to be organized in three tiers. And this tiering model actually created isolation automatically because you had a web tier that was connected out to the internet. Uh, you had an app tier that was connected in between the web servers and the app servers. A database tier that was connected in between the app servers and the database servers. All of these were physically isolated. That ne you know, one network did not talk directly to another network. So isolation was built into that model. Now, of course, with virtualization, we're bringing these things together on a one server. So now a single server could be connected into the web tier. It could also be connected into a you know, production network. Uh, it's going to be connected in some kind of storage. These connections now all go into a single server, but they're done as physically separate connections, which is why we have anywhere from 6 to 20 cables, or 6 to 12 in some cases, but in some cases going as high as 20 cables going into a single physical server. It's because of all these isolated networks you find in the data center. So when we converge the I.O., what do we do? How do we, how do we maintain that same isolation? Because we're connecting in those different networks to the I.O. director through multiple cables, and then we're going out to each server through a single cable. How are we ensuring the isolation of that environment? How are we making sure that things stay as separate as they were back when we had physically separate networks? Well, a key point is that virtual NICs and virtual HBAs are mapped to specific ports on the I.O. director. So when you create a virtual NIC, you're going to map it to a port on the I.O. director. If you create another virtual NIC and you want to have these two things isolated, you're going to map it to a different port on the I.O. director. And depending on how you have things mapped, that's what determines the isolation of the two environments. The only way these two VNICs in this case could talk to each other would be if you map them to the same port on the I.O. director and you had them configured on the same VLAN. Without that, but those two VNICs cannot talk to each other. They behave exactly as if they were on physically separate networks. So with Seago, it's the same thing as if you're running a cable from this virtual NIC down to this network and you're running a cable from this virtual NIC down to this network. You have the same level of isolation you would in the cable environment in the Seagull environment. The next thing is you can run up to 64 of those connections through each link. Through each converged I.O. link you can have up to 64 and they all remain physically isolated from the other. The only limitation is how many ports do you have down in your I.O. director to make sure that's going to happen. But assuming you have enough ports down there you can run up to 64 of them uh, through, each, uh, through each link. The next thing is you can dynamically connect isolated networks to servers. So I can connect from this network to a, a virtual NIC up in my server environment. And just as importantly, if I don't want to have that connection there, I can eliminate it, get rid of that virtual NIC, and that server no longer has access to that network. That's really important in making sure what does and what does not have access to sensitive networks such as storage devices that contain information that you have to keep isolated. This becomes very important for things like you know, medical records keeping, for payment card information, for financial information. There are many regulations about how that kind of information is controlled and the ability to, dis to connect or disconnect certain servers is very important and SIGO lets you do that dynamically. The next thing is QoS. We can supply QoS per virtual NIC. So, so you can set a high bandwidth connection for a you know, highly I.O. intensive application and then set you know, a lower bandwidth for something that's less I.O. intensive or perhaps less critical in your overall workflow. So we can set QoS on a per virtual NIC basis 
and you can also set QoS on a per virtual HVA basis. Nobody else can set QoS per VHVA. But Sego lets you do that as well, and again, run all of that through a single cable going out for different um, storage and networks. Finally, we do support VLANs. So what VLANs allow you to do is to go out from a single physical network to multiple virtual networks out in your environment. And those virtual networks, or VLANs, are separate to the extent that they are logically separate. They exist as separate Ethernet environments, but they're running over a single physical environment. So they don't support the full level of isolation you get from a physical network that's separate. But you do have a virtual network that's separate. And, and Sego does support that functionality. But the critical point here is we don't rely on that functionality for mapping that virtual link to that physical network. That mapping is done via the connection to a single port on the IO director. So we support VLANs, but we don't rely on them to provide the isolation that we deliver. So in summary, Sego is the industry's only solution that gives you both fully isolated Ethernet connections and fiber channel connections through a single shared fabric. Nobody else provides that level of isolation on both Ethernet and fiber channel through that converged environment. But Sego makes it possible, and that's what helps us deliver isolation and keeps the data secure and helps enable the cloud for our customers.